When you're working with selection tools, oftentimes you'll feather your selection to create a smoother transition between your selected pixels and your non-selected pixels. Yes, anti-aliasing does this a little bit. As we saw in the last video, it will create transitionary pixels between the foreground color and the background color. However, feathering works in a completely different way. What feathering does is it blurs the pixels on either side of the selection. This gives you a little bit more control over creating a more subtle transition between the selected and non-selected pixels. Let me show you how you should be working with the feathering option as it comes to selection tools inside of Photoshop. So the first thing that I want to do is come over and choose the quick selection tool. With this tool selected, you just want to click and drag inside the sky to quickly select the sky. So what we're going to do here is apply an adjustment layer to this image and the adjustment will be targeted based upon this selection. So if we come over to the adjustments panel and we click, in this case curves, we'll create a new layer. That layer has a mask. And if we make an adjustment and we want to make a rather dramatic adjustment, our goal here really isn't to make the nicest image, but rather understand how we should be working with the feathering option inside of Photoshop. If we click and drag down, you'll notice we're making the sky quite a bit darker. And as we make it darker, we can see this hard line between the hills and the sky. And that's what you want to avoid because this is very obvious now to the viewer that this image has been manipulated. So how can you create a softer transition? Well, feathering is one way to do that, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse this properties panel for a moment. And with the quick selection tool selected, you'll notice that we don't really have a feather option here in the options bar, unlike some of the other selection tools. If you choose one of the lasso tools, you have a feather option. If you choose a marquee tool, you have a feather option. But what's important to understand is that even if you don't have a feather option here in the options bar, you can always feather a selection. Let me go ahead and show you how you can do this. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the visibility of this adjustment layer. I'm going to reload that selection by holding down the Command key on the Mac, it's Control on Windows, and clicking on this layer mask thumbnail. That reloads the selection. What we want to do here is come up to the Select menu, and from the Select menu, we can choose Modify, and then we can choose Feather. And this will open up the Feather Selection dialog box. And here you have to establish what the feather radius should be in pixels. And this ultimately is the problem because you're never going to know the answer to this. So you're going to play a game of experimenting with some value. And if it doesn't work out quite right, you'll go backwards and reperform the process with a different value in this dialog box. It's not an efficient way to work. Nevertheless, let's take a look at what happens. Let's go ahead and add a feather radius of 10 pixels. Click OK. You don't really see a difference here, but if we come over and add another adjustment layer, and again, we'll go with curves, click on the curves button to add the new adjustment layer, create another dramatic adjustment. Now, as you do that, you'll notice there's a difference here in the horizon. You still see a pretty hard line, but you also see a haloing effect take place, especially around the elephant. It almost looks like a glow. So this feather radius really isn't the right value. Like I said earlier, you're then left to experiment. You would have to undo this and re-perform the selection and re-perform the adjustment. And it's, like I said, a tedious process. So the best bet is not to use the feather option at all with your selection tools. Let me show you what I mean. Again, I'm going to turn off the visibility of this adjustment layer. I'm going to come over and hold down the Command key or the Control key on Windows and click on the Layer Mask thumbnail here on the first adjustment layer. After doing that, what we want to do is apply another adjustment by clicking the Curves button to add another adjustment layer. And we're going to click and drag this down so it's a fairly stark contrast between the sky and the foreground. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to change the feathering that's taking place with that selection dynamically. We can come over right here and click on this button in the Properties panel, which is the Masks section, and notice you have a feather option. So now, if I click and drag this to the right, when I let go of the mouse, you'll see that feathering take place. So this gives you the ability to make adjustments to that feather value that you don't have when you're applying the feather command through the selection tool itself. 
So this is really the preferred method of working with that feather option. And this typically will yield the best results. Now clearly our adjustment is really way too dramatic for it to ever work within this image. But by having the ability to make the feather adjustment here within the properties panel, you're going to get much better results and you have the ability to correct it at any point in time within your work. If you continue to work on this image and you decide that you want to make a modification to it, just come back to the adjustment layer, come back to the properties panel and make that feather adjustment.